everyone. So here we are. Uh, lunchtime. Yep. And we're going to have a chat yeah. about something that I think, Tamsin, we both, not I think, I know we're both so passionate about. And that is obviously business. Mm. So we've known one another for a couple of years. Imagine time ticking when you're having fun. And it all started a couple of years ago when I met you and uh, we had a conversation about business. Mm. Do you remember that? I do remember that, yeah. So Lindy invites me out for a cup of coffee. And here I think, oh, we're just going to have a lack of chat. And um, it is a lack of chat, but there's questions. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you might not like the answers to the questions, to be completely fair. So Lindy asked me about my business. And I said, she's very attentive and she's a very good listener. And we're having a chat. And then after probably about 20 minutes or 30 minutes of talking, she says to me, no, but you're not a business owner. You're a freelancer. Um, and I didn't like that answer. So... I think what I take out of that is if you are feeling a dissociation between where you currently are and where you want to be, that means that your business needs some work and some love and you need to have some tough conversations. And it's okay. It's okay. It's no. okay. You know what? And I think uh, we, we both had a giggle that day. And, and then seriousness stepped in and you still asked me, so what do we do? And I said, well, you know what? We can consider entering into a coaching relationship. But before we go there, talking about what coaching meant for you, I want to take you right back to when, if you can even remember the day you decided you want to start a business or have a business. Can you even remember when that was? I, I can, yeah. And I wish I could pretend that it was as well premeditated as what you make it sound like. I, I had a friend call me from Joburg and she was working for a very traditional marketing agency and she was moodless that day. I mean, there's just no better description because what she'd done is she'd done this pitch for a large brand and they were so happy with the concept but they left the building because they had no digital support in-house. There was no plan for the campaigns to work on social media alongside everything they were looking to do on TV, radio, print, billboards, whatever else they had planned. So she now decided she was coming up with a plan of action herself. She was like, you, you're quite good with the social media stuff. Put together a red card for me and I'm going to pitch it to my bosses tomorrow and then re-pitch to the client. And so I sat and I worked it all out and looked at what people charge, how they charge, all of these things, created a price list and sent it off to her. And then I sat there looking at this list of numbers and I went, well, I've got prices, so maybe I should just see what could happen and put it out there. Because I was thinking at that point in time I needed to, to make a decision. Was I finding a job or what was I doing after my maternity leave to get back into the workplace? And we needed a solution so I put it up and that was it and that was the 2nd of May 2018 I spent workers day building a price list <laughs> imagine yeah. so quite a nice day in the calendar yeah, yeah. always remind you hey when it's workers day 1st of May the very next day I birthed the idea of having my own business yeah. actually starting out on my own Facebook page was started on the 2nd of May and, up went and off you go yeah. and I think that's always what I love you know the very first thing is the decision and then whatever else follows, it's okay, but it's making that decision. Was there any doubt, okay, so was there ever any doubt in your mind as to uh, what you would eventually um, want this business to look like? I mean, how would you go about doing it? Was there ever doubt? I mean, just take us back to those very beginning, if you can remember thus far. Well, I think at the beginning, it was just very much like, am I making money? Where can I make money? How can I make money? Where are the times? Because I can help everybody, right? Everybody has a business. Absolutely. And they all need help and they all need me. Very, very. <laughs> I mean, that's not how it works. But that was very much the thought process at the time. And um, I mean, when I met when, when Lindy and I had that first cup of coffee, it was so funny because I was so chuffed with myself that day, I think, because I just, I was going to pay myself slightly more than what I've been earning full time. And I mean, I was a junior before taking maternity leave. So it, was, it wasn't much, it really was not much. And I was super chuffed. And I also remember a conversation with my dad when he was like, well, what's next? And I was like, I don't know. And he's like, well, what does your business plan say? And I was like, well, what's that? And his face <laughs> was absolutely shocked that I didn't have a plan in place. So there's definitely been times where I have absolutely no idea what I was 
building towards or developing or growing and I think that that's changed a couple of times you know so it's gone from that to well what's the next step and what's the next step and that was fine at the beginning but then also coming to an idea of well, what, yeah, what is the end what does that look like yeah and I, and I think you know often I'm um, working with business owners we don't often think like that do we I mean the start's the important thing getting that very first client um, getting the first invoice out and oh hey, my first payment yay um, but really do we ever think about where's all of this going I'll go I'll come back to that but I want to ask you your name of your business mm. I remember uh, when you said okay you know uh, my name is Tamsin and I've got a business and it's called social happiness I was going wow that's a special name I love the name where did the name come from again I wish that I had a really smart story <laughs> I really wish I could be like oh you know from a marketing perspective I thought this all out and it works well because social media is a place of, of confusion and I think chaos for a lot of business owners and what we do is aim to bring happiness to that space but it goes back to a tiny little side hustle that I started while I was still fully employed. I was doing vinyl wall cutouts and t-shirt designs and my sister at one point gave me a tea jar which on the lid says happiness is homemade and I loved that and I was like well this is a little homemade business on the side so I called it homemade happiness and then when I was looking to launch this one I was like well maybe I need an umbrella theme. So I just picked, I picked happiness as my, my umbrella, which I think is actually, now I'm looking back and I'm like, well, it's actually quite apt, it's cool. And then, so I just made it social happiness, but I think it's really worked very well. Yeah. And people always respond well to the name, so. Yeah. And I think it's very important, you know, on the one hand, one wants your name to be catchy and, you know, but on the other hand, it's got to be self-explanatory in a way, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, there's got to be some idea of, as to what, what it is that you do. Okay, lovely. Now, looking back, a couple of years later, um, could you share with us some of the very highs? Let's start always positive, shall we? Yeah. What has been some of the amazing moments uh, in your journey uh, as a business owner? Can you, can you name a couple? Can you take us through that? Yeah, I think... Um Definitely, like the first month where we broke like 100,000 worth of sales, and as a retainer business, that's quite nice because we know that then that's where we're going every month, which is powerful. And every time I hire a new person to join our team, that's always a high for me because it means that we've got enough work to have somebody else on board, and we've got somebody else's creativity coming and joining the, the party. And um, I think my most recent one, well, two actually, we've we've signed our first big franchise client, which oh, I'm wow. enjoying working with. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's cool because we're impacting things on the national level, but also helping individual business owners. So that's great. Great. And Fabulous. then the book. So I'm writing a book, and we're getting ready to launch. And actually, I haven't even told Lindy this yet, but I've got my well, I've got a couple of pre-orders in, but I got one in for 25 copies yesterday. Oh my oh, word! <laughs> Oh wow, okay. So I definitely want to come back to the book because I think, um, you know, I believe, when I, and we had a conversation about that where I said I really do believe that we all have got a book in ourselves. And you know, at what point do we have the actual courage to put our thoughts on paper? Because once you do that, it's eternalized, right? There we go. Yeah. So I'd love to come back to the book. Um, but yet, as we know, all journeys has got the downs and um yeah will you be will you be prepared to share with us a couple of those downs those moments where you really wonder what am i doing you know is this even worth the while so i mean we've had a couple of clients in where it just feels like it doesn't matter what you do you can't get the communication right and you're missing each other oh, yeah. and um nothing feels like it's working properly yeah. even though like it's working for every other client but there's just sometimes there's just one where it just isn't working and that one situation makes you doubt everything i was going to say it's so soul destroying you know because i mean in business we all want to do our absolute best right and you want to serve your clients with like absolutely your whole ability and then just sometimes nothing that you do seems to be okay yeah yeah so i mean and that happens every now and again and i think it's there as like a little humility check almost maybe mm -hmm. or this is the one that we're going to learn a lot from and yeah. we can implement things so i do find that where we have um trying accounts at the time it feels very difficult and it sucks 
but we always do a post-mortem. We always go and pull it apart and see what it is that we could have done better, what can we learn from it, should we communicate differently, is there a process we need to put in place. So even though it sucks at the time, it's powerful in the long run, which is great. Yeah, and I think if I can, if I can just add on to that, um, would, you, would you agree if I say that that's the whole point? When you start off, we don't have a playbook, you don't have a manual. Um, you've got some idea, but it's very much a process of discovery, right? And learning and, and almost uh, like re keep on reinventing ourselves because it's a process. Um, and as we grow, um, our ability to handle situations, to handle bigger clients, to take on bigger challenges, right? Yeah. But yeah, that initial getting over that disappointment. Yes. So what about the ones that say no? You know, <laughs> yeah. would you agree with me that that tests us often in, um, in our belief and you know who we think we are but then they don't get it and then they say no maybe not now or you know they come up with some sort of reason would you agree with me that that's always often a big a big low for us um it is i think i used to experience it as a bigger low it used to hurt every single time it used to be there like it, it was a bit like dating and being rejected like yeah exactly. you know? um, <laughs> so that's what it used to feel like but where we are now, I know that that no is not about me. And I think that's the difference, is realizing that it's not about you. It's about where that potential client is in their own journey at that point in time. Do they need help? Do they need assistance? Maybe they've just brought somebody on board, you know? So it, it, what's interesting to me is like some of the clients that we've closed recently are either old clients from, from 2019 who prior to COVID and decided they needed to reformulate the mm. business or they've been in our sales funnels for three years yes. and now <laughs> they've decided to do business with us. Well, there you go. You know, and I think if we can get our minds around, firstly, it's not personal if they say no, and then no could mean not yet. I'm not ready. It's not about us as service providers. It's about where they find themselves in their journeys. Yeah. And what I found is those ones that have taken that extra length of time, by the time they've decided that they're working with us, they become my most loyal customers. Uh, well, isn't that just true? Because now they're ready and they can understand the value that they add. And it's almost like you guys are on the same wavelength, right? Um, so, with, yeah, there we go. So, Tams, the reality of COVID, you know, and we don't have to go through what, what that meant, we all know, and we were all impacted by COVID in so many ways. How, thinking back, did it impact you in your business and social happiness? Anything that you can share with us during that very difficult trying time? I, I really feel like COVID was a, a winter season for us, in that it was a pruning you know, like, you know, you've got to get your pruning done by the end of August. Right. Like, that's just the thing. Mental note for this weekend. But um, <laughs> the cutting away of the dead wood of practices and processes that we had in the business, mm. ways of communicating with clients, ways we were marketing ourselves even. I changed a lot of different things in COVID. It gave me the breathing space to think differently about what it was that we did mm. and how we connect with people. And it highlighted to me how important my team is to what we do. So for me, it was yeah, cutting off the dead wood and just repositioning ourselves in the market. And the minute we did that, we started seeing growth. And I mean, not even like after COVID, because I mean, what is after COVID? We still have cases. But even in 2020, we started seeing growth month on month mm. by just doing that. And I don't think it would have been possible for every industry, to be fair, but it, it allowed us that space. But saying that, I've spoken to people in hospitality, for example, and they've had booming mm. years, actually, yeah. because they've had to renegotiate their budget and go, but how do we do this smarter? Mm. So there was opportunity and space to create new ways of doing things. So, oh, so if, I, if I understand what you're saying, um, for you, the time was literally taking stock, um, you know, the good old perspective, and maybe we've been spoiled a little bit prior to COVID with maybe in some instances things were really groovy and you know we got spoiled because business was easy, it was on the up and like almost from nowhere. I remember Thursday the 26th of March where everything 
um, just came to a complete standstill and that was that eerie silence. Yeah. What were some of your initial thoughts thinking back? Did well, I mean, I think I make it sound like, oh, everything was peachy and so easy. <laughs> yeah, but, that's, um, that's the point. I'm going, hello. <laughs> Random squirrels at a rave on ecstasy is probably, you know, what it was. Um, I think it was, it was absolute chaos because it was schools closed. I had a two-year-old at the time and, um, yeah, suddenly it was being a parent at home looking after a child full time who needed a lot of stimulation and love and attention. Suddenly he couldn't go to school and see his friends, so you know, creating that emotional space for tiny humans is important, uh, which is difficult when you're going through your own stuff as well. And it was like every, every time my phone rang, I just couldn't look at it because I was like, oh, it's another client cancelling. Oh, it's another client cancelling because everyone is receiving. I remember. Oh like, my gosh, it was horrible. It really, really was. So that was absolutely. We lost about fifty percent of our clients um, mm -hmm. in two weeks, which was insane. And the the fifty percent who stayed, I'm so grateful that they stayed with us because it gave us an opportunity to do lots of communication for them that they needed at that point in time. Because suddenly we almost had to over communicate things. Mm. Um, but at the same time, it gave that fifty percent drop gave me the space. So I mean, I did do remember calling Lindy at one point and being like, "I need money in the bank account now, and how do we how do we make this happen?" And and Lindy was being like, "No, just just stay the course, just stay calm." And and that was a very sort of anchoring effect in that. Whereas I think I could have gone in twenty different directions. If they hadn't just been just you know stay with what you're doing, we look at it, we think it, but keep doing what you're doing. And I think what you say is so true, Tams. You know, COVID taught us so many lessons on so many levels. But um, I think the one true basic stance, you know, irregardless of the storms out there, um, you know, whether it's COVID, whether it's um, global, macroeconomic, whatever, whatever. Um, God forbid something like Facebook crashes or whatever. Um, it's staying the course and just go back to basics doing the fundamentals right and just stick to your course because I think that's often what we lack is having that sense of vision and plan and um, yeah so congratulations I've seen you growing like exponentially since um, since COVID I'm so proud of you I mean we went over some of your figures the other day I mean we're talking um, like well over double figures growth month on month absolutely fantastic growth um, in a very overpopulated shall I say industry mm. so how do you go about differentiating yourself and social happiness out there amongst the sea of competitors so what what do you do? Are you, are you willing to share a couple of secrets with us? Yeah, no, I am. Um, I think one of the things that I always uh, stick with is I, I do believe in honesty and transparency, and I think that that is something that makes a big difference, especially in an industry like ours, where there is this almost fear of fly by night service providers, because that that is a, a problem that we have and we face, or you know service providers who say they can do things but can't necessarily so I mean Richard's brand and say yes and figure it out later is great but you have to figure it out yeah so that's quite challenging so I find transparency and honesty helps especially at the beginning so actually I can like for example we have a client that we're helping out at the moment they have an event next weekend but the advertising only got turned on yesterday so we've got nine days to ramp up ticket sales for a huge event in okay Germany. okay and I did say to them like look I will run the campaigns for you but this is very short notice. So, you know, making sure that our clients have got all the information up okay. front so they can make their decisions. So, communication, 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 keeping your client in the loop, always being one step ahead because ultimately, you know, ultimately they, are, they are trusting you that you've got everything sorted, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so definitely communication, big thing. Big one, definitely. And with that, another thing is also communication, but knowing what our business owners' goals are mm. is so important. Yeah, yeah. I can go and create content, no problem, and get it out, no problem. But if it's not in line with what our clients want to need or are actually even looking to develop in their business, it makes it. And I mean, ultimately, you're there to provide a service, but it's it's not coming from I know what you need. It's coming from let's have a conversation, and you tell me what you need, and and I come with 
possible things we could do yeah. because you're positioning yourself as being the expert. Yes, right. yeah. And, you know, and often with education that comes with that because, well, you know, a, a million views on YouTube would be great, but what do we have to do to achieve that? So it's good that that's the goal, but then what do we need to do to get there? Mm. and sort of educate and walk alongside them, which makes a big difference. Yeah, and I remember times we had the conversation about understanding the language of your client. You know, putting yourself in their shoes. Um, you know, it's like, how does it feel like to be you and you know what what is the reality of your industry you know and i think again communication with the right language the right understanding empathy towards you know all those things yeah and i must say social happiness is getting that right um you guys spent a, a tremendous amount of time in um the upfront conversation yeah making sure that we understand the scope of the work that needs to be done um pitching the expectation of your client, right? So so guys, you can hear it's all about the client. It's all about their needs. It's about their wants. And yes, the client is right because they know what they want, but then often they don't. And it's a process of leading them through the journey yes. where you get to play. And um, I think the supportive role, right? Yeah, it's quite supportive. The supportive, the guardian, the I'll look out for you. Trust me, we're going to go on this journey. Yeah. So now, the most exciting thing, um, I remember a, a, a session, coaching session with Tams and I, uh, and I asked and I said, Tams, uh, what next? You know, um, how could you possibly, uh, is there anything that you could think of how you can set yourself apart? I mean, what, what will really push your boundaries? Mm. Can you remember that I day? I can, I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, it was good. Um, because I was, at that point, I was also sitting, really frustrated because suddenly we had bigger businesses knocking on our door and they were asking for proposals and with bigger businesses come bigger pictures but it also comes with longer waiting times on a yes or a no and I was starting to climb the walls so then he's saying was how are we, what are we doing next how are we how am I setting myself apart from everybody else and at the same time I'm going I need something to distract me I need something and I don't know what that is and we started talking and what we came up with was lecturing and I, I went away from that session going, oh, this is a brilliant idea, I'll get to talk to people, I'll get to educate them, I'll get to help them. And then I think it took less than 24 hours for me to go, but I don't want to mark papers. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> of all the things, I just don't want to mark papers. I'll, I'll the boredom <laughs> and you see yourself with these stacks and stacks of stuff. I have friends who are teachers and we will go away on girls weekends and the stack of papers oh, come oh, with okay. to get everything done. And I was like, I can't, I can't see myself being that person. Like I won't be that diligent, it will always be late, it, this is not the career path necessarily. Um, a lecturing position where I can stand up and talk and maybe have a TA doing the marking, but okay, negotiable. That, can, that can work, that, can, that work. can work. But that's, there's nothing there at the moment. So I started thinking about, well, how can I educate as many people as possible, as quickly as possible? And then the idea of the book sort of was born. Okay, lovely. So take us through the book then. Um, what's the title? You know, where did you even start? Okay, so I'll start with where I started because it was definitely not the title first. I okay, so I decided I was going to write a book, and that's great. But about what? I mean, I think is the next question. So it's all lovely and well to be like, I'm going to write a book, and I know it was going to be about marketing, but that was the, as far as I got. Into. Okay. So what I did is I sort of mapped it out, so brainstormed it out, so just wrote it all down as to what, what could help. And I was like, well, if, if I write a book, it has to answer a problem, because otherwise it's not doing anything. Hmm. So I wrote down all the problems that I could think of that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis with our clients. The same stumbling blocks and hurdles that we see in every business that comes to us. Not okay. every business has all the hurdles, but they sure. all have something. Yeah. And just laid it all out so I could see what would work. And I ended up with a list of 15 problems. Okay. So the ones that are writing a book on each problem, let's turn it into a book that covers each of them and a bit of a what is what is the problem? Because I think sometimes we don't we don't know what we don't know. So to just give it a name and, mm. and give it a context and then why it's a problem. Because just because I'm saying it's a problem doesn't mean that it is a problem. Really. I get that. So the why and what impact it has on your business if yeah. this isn't resolved. 
and then a little action list, a how-to. Okay. So that there's something that can be taken out of every chapter. So I've done this, and I was like, right, so that's what we're going to do, but then I needed a name, so I'm spending time thinking about a name, and I came up with a really good name, but that's not this book. <laughs> so that was quite a weird <laughs> oh, that's, that's good to know. There's another book coming, guys. Oh, there's, that's there's, fantastic. There's another book in my well, head. There we go. I was like, I love this title, but it doesn't match the map, the mind mapping that I've done, so it doesn't okay. belong here. Okay. So I put it to one side, and I was like, okay, but I really like that name, so let's find a cousin for it. So let's keep it in the same vein. So the book's name is Don't Be a Twat Waffle, 15 Marketing Mistakes You Can Avoid. And oh, wow. Yeah, that's and, and how amazing. And, and is it true that the book has now got its life? I mean, it's been born. Yes. Um, you know, it's almost like just birthing this. And you send it out into the Ethereum and off it goes. What, what does it feel like? Yeah, what so it feel like? it's quite a weird stage at the moment because all the writing has been done, the majority okay. of the editing is done. I need to spend some time in the next few days just going over the last couple of comments from my editor. So that's okay. where we're at. It's okay. like one paragraph I'm okay. going to rewrite. But there's a cover. Um, we've got a photo shoot book for some pretty photos. Oh wow, okay. In September. The back end, the back, back cover, back photo. nice picture. I had photos taken in January and I was like, oh no, okay, <laughs> my face has changed quite a bit since then, let's go for new ones. And um, yes, that's where we are. So it's, it's quite a weird, it's like I've created something, but it's not quite in the market just yet. And we're looking to launch for October. So now it's the, that's done. I've got an ISBN number, it's, 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 it's you know, logged with the uh, South African library. Oh wow. Which is great, but great. now I need to work on the promotion and getting it out there okay. and telling people about it and pre-sales are open, so now I'm getting people to sign up for that and I'm playing with the idea of anybody who signs up for pre-sales might just get their books ahead of the launch. Oh wow guys, so there we go. So Tams, where would we get this amazing book? I mean, what's what's the process? So at the moment, the pre-sales are open on my website, so socialhappiness.co.za okay. has a link through to the pre-sales. And right now, you can order either an ebook or a soft cover version. One of the things I need to do, as soon as I've not written this one paragraph, is book some studio time and I will be recording the Audible version as ah, well. Ah, lovely. Yeah. So we're also talking Audible books yes. or audio book for yeah, that. an audio book. Oh, wow. Well done. <laughs> and, I, and I think you're right. You've got to be able to deliver on various channels, right? So it's got to be an e-book. It's got to be an audio book. It's got to be digital. It's got to be hardcover. Um, you've got to think of just everything. Yeah, and I think that's also the thing is now it's going, okay, for rollout, what are we doing? So, okay, we'll have an Audible version an ebook and the soft cover version, but we so right now the soft cover versions will just be with me. But okay. you know, we could look at a exclusive books or bargain books down the line, words worth are all options. Okay. The ebook, I've got a list of places that I'll start putting it up. Amazon is a non negotiable for that, of course, because I'll need to link it with Audible as well. But Take a Lot has ebooks, yeah, and there's so many places where it can yeah. be listed, and just sort of. Instead of going, well, it's going to be all out, all at once, in all places, there will be a bit of a rollout plan. So that well, this is something to talk about. Yeah, I was going to say, and, and, and you know, your original, our um, idea around lecturing, um, going on a book tour. I mean, talking about the content, you know, educating the market, you know, and I can just see you getting all excited. But, yeah, some travel time and yeah. yeah and I'm thinking a launch party and I feel like oh, well. all the waffles. Okay. <laughs> So guys, there you go. Uh, don't be a twat waffle. Um, an amazing, um, shall we say, uh, it's it's a it's a manual. It's a guide. It's uh, you know, and even if you've been in marketing all your life, so who, so that's maybe a good question. Yeah. Who's this book directed at? I mean, who would want to read this book? I I would recommend that business owners read this book, and not in a way that you would now need to go and do all of your marketing yourself, but. I feel it's very important that business owners are empowered in marketing with knowledge so you know what it is that you're asking for when you're talking to staff or service providers. Okay. So that's that that is a part of it. So to a business owner, you could give it to anybody who's gonna work on your marketing in your business as well, because there are little actionable lists at the end of each Love chapter. It. 
So okay. business owners definitely, mm-hmm. and then there is an implementation plan. I love the idea that every chapter has got its little list of actionable. So I mean, you know, it's almost like a quick reference guide. Um, you know, just quickly, okay, what was this about again? Okay, reminder about this one, two, three things I need to keep in mind. I love that idea. Yeah. yeah. So Tams, I just want to say congrats. And, and, and may the force be with you because that <laughs> was so amazing and, and you know guys as a business coach and coaching my clients I get inspired by the things that you guys do and, and how you set yourself up for the next step so yeah if anything you've inspired me to write my book so okay. I'll definitely endeavor to do that. A final question that I'd like to ask you you know the world is changing at such a speed and we all know that but this new reality around the metaverse mm. and the uh, uh, augmented reality, and I've heard some amazing references in terms of a, another dimension where life happens. How do you think that impacts the way that we A, look at business or, you know, or even in business? What does it mean in that dimension? And then second of all, maybe a bit of a a difficult question, but what about marketing then in that space? Um, Any any thoughts on on those two questions? I think it's good questions. I, I remember being in high school and having the teachers at some point, I think it was in my grade 11 year, say, well, I, at, the, at that time, thought was the stupidest sentence I'd ever heard in my life. They were like, we're preparing you for jobs that don't even exist yet. And I remember thinking, but how the hell do you do that? <laughs> like, what, what is wrong with you? Like, you can't pre- be prepared for things that don't exist. That was my feeling at the time. But I think the metaverse is, is going to be very much that. It's going to give us more business opportunities that we don't currently have. And I think they can be maybe a little bit unfathomable right now, because until we're in that space, we're not gonna know what to expect. Mm. So the key there is gonna be keeping an eye open for opportunities. And there's always gonna be opportunities to make money. And I think that there's gonna be two things. One, we're going to end up servicing things in the metaverse itself, including your wardrobe outfits, for the digital space only. Um, but I think that like health, fitness, nutrition and functional medicine might also go on an increase because we might now be suddenly spending far more time indoors and uh, locked into the machine. I mean, it is quite matrixy in a way. And for marketing, I think, you know, we really live in a world where we have so many marketing messages sent our way on a day-to-day basis. There's a good, percent, good, percent, good chance that that's just going to increase. Okay. So, but that being said, what I thought was really interesting about COVID was, yes, now we were all suddenly at home and all of our traditional means of marketing, not all, but most of them, were suddenly capped. Yeah. Like, billboards made no difference to the mass population. Absolutely. Branded cars. Yeah. And it's parked in your driveway. Yeah. Um, but what if the internet were to go down tomorrow? What if one of the CK cables is cut in half? Absolutely. So it's, it's important to make sure that our marketing is multifaceted at the end of the day. And if like we that. do digital, anything like traditional that. we can leverage to make sure your business is safe, having a good holistic approach is important. And I can't agree with you. With, you know, we just don't know. So I think the idea, I think what I hear you say is be aware, um, be, out of, uh, you know, be on the lookout in terms of opportunities, um, but never forget that the traditional ways, the good solid basics in terms of marketing yourself, getting yourself out there in so many ways as you can possibly do, including the good old knocking on doors and whatever else um, it takes. Um, you know, that will stay with us because, um, God forbid, the human side will always be with us, I do hope. Yes, we're humans at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, the only way that's going to change is, you know, if we do have a robot uprising, but that will be a challenge for that time. I okay, and we'll have that conversation again. <laughs> <laughs> then we can see what we need to do. I mean, there might not be options, and that's fine. Yeah. So we'll just see what happens. I have to ask you, Tams, as a business coach, um, doesn't have to be me, but you know, looking back at your journey, um, having a coach, what difference did that make for you? Um, anything that, that you can think that, hey, you know, had I not had a business coach, it would have gone a different way or I would have ended up somewhere else. I think there's two sides of, of that quick um, answer for me. The one is, is that 
I have a marketing degree, but it doesn't mean that I have a business degree. I started off BA and then into marketing. So the creative and the psychology and the, the understanding of people, in my knowledge, is very strong. But the how to run a business and all of that side mm. wasn't necessarily very strong. So having um, a business coach for that reason has been incredibly helpful because I've learned a lot about business. And I also know that, especially, okay, so I am with Action Coach, so I've got you, but even larger than that, there's the Action Coach Network. So mm. I have a whole load of people that I can mm. actually ask if I get stuck with something, mm. which is great. So that makes a big difference. But also just, so let's say that I have this amazing business background and I've grown up surrounded by entrepreneurs. Mom and dad in business. And, and then, yeah, exactly. And I just, it was, it was ingrained in me. I think I would still need a coach because just having somebody as a sounding board mm. or to um, just, you know, have as a, I, this is my idea, is it mm. a good idea? Are Can we, I just dump my brain? What do you think? Am I loony and thinking? Yeah, or yeah. I'm stuck on this issue, yeah. but then sometimes that's not the real issue. There's yeah. something else that needs Absolutely. attention. That makes a big difference. And it's very difficult to do that with uh, staff or with loved ones mm. because they, the staff doesn't need to be worried about what you're worried about. And your loved ones are not in the day to day business. And I'm like, oh, shame that, that sucks. Yeah, and, and are we going to have this conversation again, sort of thing? Yes, you know? yeah, we heard about this last night. <laughs> and what do you, you uh, what do you really want to hear from me? So I don't think loved ones are always positioned very well to be completely honest. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Or they can also be brutally honest in some cases, which is also and then like, like uh, you know, and just pop your balloon. <laughs> where, where, where you're going for the? I just need loves and calls. Yeah. yeah, so sometimes yeah. mixing business and yeah. family is not always the best. Sometimes it works well. It just depends on the setup. But I think for me, it's made that big difference in having a sound day board. And what about the good old accountability factor? You know, mm. when we, we, we get to be our worst enemy, despite our best intentions, we're just not making progress, not getting that to-do list done. Yeah. Has that helped in any way? It, it has. I think I'm, I think I'm a fairly good to-do list ticker offer. You are actually, yes. so I must say. I, I think I've always been, like when I got homework assignments, I do them because I'd rather spend time on the beach than than sit in my own. That's a good idea. Um, get it done. Yeah, that's it. it. So it was like get home, do homework, get done to the beach, and it was done. And but you know, life doesn't always work that way. So sometimes you are on deadline, and it's it's stressful. But it definitely helps. I think so for the to do list. Yes, but actually even more so than that. Rather than the day to day to do list, it's that bigger to do list uh, that. What, what's happening in the future? What am I building towards? Mm. That is what's made the yeah, the yeah, the future thinking. And I think especially you've just said I'm a very to-do person on, on what I need to do. But do we spend enough time thinking and really looking at options? You know, where am I going with this? The future planning. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's where accountability also helps a lot. It does, yeah. Otherwise, I could make a to-do list and a whole load of random stuff and feel good because I've ticked off today. But it's actually really good to keep having that, that what is that plan, what is that vision, so that when you've got those moments of, well, I have finished two days to do this, what next? Well, the plans are in there, mm -hmm. which makes it a big difference. Yeah, difference. And I can really say, folks, that in, in Tam's case, um, being diligent around planning, I mean, uh, and spending the time doing the thinking, and that's been for me definitely one of the reasons why you find yourself in such a successful space having grown so amazingly so well done on that we're super proud of you so guys yeah i think uh, we more or less wrapped up um i enjoyed it did you enjoy it i did thank you okay and uh yeah leave us some comments um it would be lovely to build on this, I think. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for being with us. And thanks a lot, Tams, for being open and honest. And I'm excited about business and what possibilities that is out there. And I think you share that with me. Any final, any final comment on that? Uh, yeah, I think that there are opportunities. It's just about finding them and assessing which ones are right for you. There we go. Thank you so much. It's been fantastic. Thank you.